So hello guys, uh, good uh, good good day. No, uh, today we uh, we will be uh, discussing the first part of our module on forensic photography. No, so uh, welcome. <laughs> so I've listed here the different topics that we will be covering. No, we have at least four. No, topic for scheduled for today. No. And they are the following. We have here history of photograph, uh, photography. We're going to cover that a little. No? Then we're going to define what is photography and discuss the significance of photography to police work and uh, the different fields of police photography. No? So just maybe a little bit of introduction lang sa mga ito no before we could proceed to what we should be talking about really no? under the concept of police photography since this will be our introductory introductory discussion for this subject matter no uh, then again i uh, had given you the module though for this subject i hope uh, you are already reading it kasi hindi naman lahat yung nandun is i can be able to discuss my discussion will only guide you on the matters that you should be familiarizing yourself with as far as our uh, topics are concerned okay so let's jump into our first topic which is the historical event of uh, the development of photography so we have there some personalities no? may mga personalities tayo dito involved plus with their contribution to the field of photography so going first with Aristotle no? Well, you know the one who is Aristotle, no? Uh, he is a famous Greek philosopher. Uh, his contribution to the field of photography was his invention on the pinhole camera, no? Or yung tinatawag natin camera obscura, okay? So, this gave birth to the first concept of using, you know, using light in order to uh, record a photo. No, hindi pa ito yung perfect camera no? pero ito na yung start kumbaga on the uh, conception na they are already gaining idea on how they could uh, use light in capturing image and so on so first is we have the pinhole camera no? or the known as camera obscura which was contributed by Aristotle in uh, the early days no? From there, we jump to Isaac Newton. No? Well, again, another uh, uh, philosopher and a mathematician and physicist. No? His contribution was somewhat related to light. No? Yung light. So, he discusses, no? he come up with ideas on what's the nature of light. Kasi, if you are into photography, light is very important. Napakalaga kasi ng light no sa sa pagproduce ng photograph and Isaac Newton discuss no uh, on this matter like like for example no he noted that uh, we have different types of light no we have white light no and among other type of light that we have and he believed no he stated that he he actually discovered and proved that the strongest light is white light no uh, he defended this theory by allowing white light to pass through the so-called prism. No, yung parang it's it's an object that has a tip that uh, diffracts different light. So pag tumama yung light doon, the white light, it diffracts into different forms of light so that forms the different colors that we have. Uh, so when you remember yung mga pag pag ginugusapan diyan or light, prism, that's no other than uh, Isaac Newton. No? That's his contribution to the field of uh, forensic photography. No? Not really on the forensic photography, but on the photography itself. Because light is very important to photography. In developing or capturing image, light is very important. So any contribution related to light will surely be uh, considered as a noticeable contribution into the field of photography. So we have Isaac Newton. We have the year 1839 that, that's considered as the birth year of photography. No? The year when the science of photography became public knowledge. So you see, no, uh, early days we have uh, the development of the camera obscura. We have the conception of you know the light and its use on photography. 
but those are not yet made in public until the year 18 uh, yes 1839 so 1839 they already uh, make it known to the public that we have or uh, we can develop this form of uh, a machine now we can develop this form of an instrument that could record of image that could record yeah yeah an image of something with the use of uh, an object which we know for a fact now as camera uh, sensitized material and uh, of course the light the, the use of light to, to record all of these things so all of these things no all of these uh, ideas became uh, became public no? uh, in year 1839 that's why many considers 1839 as the birth year of photography ironically no uh, you need to remember this because sometimes it it's an important event, very significant event in the field of photography. So they come to us this also sometimes in your exams. No? Then we have also Joseph Nice for Nipse. No? He was the person who produced the so called heliograph, heliographic drawing. It's basically a contact printing which an image is engraved into a solid object, then some chemicals are being put into it, then being pressed into another object then it produces an image no you know the concept of stampad no yung parang yes the stampad diba where uh, signatures or writings are being engraved into the wood no? into the wood into a solid object then you put it on an ink then you press it against another object could be a paper or, or flat surface no what is engraved into the solid object will also be uh and mag, mag, mag uh, magiging visible siya doon sa another object kung saan prenes mo yan so yan di ba yung signature mo on the stamp pad you press it to other flat surface then it will produce an image that's the concept of a ano, heliographic drawing it's very important kasi nga well let's say for example you need to uh you need to draw a certain image no thousand times <laughs> i mean i mean this could be like uh hindi siya kung isipin mo ngayon parang what for 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 ano para lang doon uh mag malaking ano na yan achievement but actually during the early days no where in let's say for example you need to print no you need to copy no uh uh, a document no Kumbaga, you need to produce a multiple copy of a certain document wherein pare pare siya isusulat mo lahat. so imagine that no so if you're going to produce 1000 copy of a certain page of a document you can actually make that easier if you just create an engraving into a, some solid object then put ink then press it into a clean sheet of paper then it's done no parang dumali siya parang nakukuha mo yung photocopy na no? something like that uh, before it was called the heliographic drawings no or contact print no contact printing okay that's the contribution of uh, Joseph Joseph nice for Nietzsche very significant also that we have also Luis uh, Jacques Mande de Guerre no so if you heard about the garyotype, no, that's one of his contribution. Well, he's a Parisian painter and a theater designer, no, uh, who continued the the contact printing of Niepce to perfect a photographic process. So in 1839, he was successful enough to have his invention purchased by the government and made public. So again, no, uh, this might look like very simple achievement but during those times that they don't have this uh, they don't have the technology that we have today no, this is very significant no, napakahalaga ng mga achievement ito kasi if we don't have these ideas basically this is the start of photocopy no, uh, con uh, yeah, contact printing photography and many other types of uh, machine that we have today that can easily replicate a certain document into another no these are the beginning of it. Ito yung genesis niya. No? Ito yung ninuno ng mga technology na we have today in, te in terms of uh, copying. No? Then, uh, as we have stated, the daguerreotype, 
this uh, a description of the first photograph that was were scientifically produced immediately after the birth of photography. So from the concept of contact printing by Joseph Nipse, no, Luis Jacques Mande Daguerre tried to develop it, no, parang inimprove niya palalo to produce the so-called daguerreotype, which uh, produces the first photograph no, uh, just after 1839. Then we have William Henry Fox Talbot also. He was the first person to make uh, the demonstration on a photographic technique to the Royal Society of London. The English scientists who pointed out the basis of modern photography today. No. So he demonstrated the so-called photographic technique, no? presented it to the Royal Society of London, which uh, turns to what we have right now. No? From this development of Talbot, no? Marami yung mga, marami tong katawagan yan. We have like talotype, things like that. But basically, it's somewhat like the same with the geriotype and so on. No? So, that was pointed out now as the basis of modern photography. No? Then we have also uh, John F. W. Herschel. No? He was the first person who coined the term photography. Kasi before, before they have the term photography, no, they call these things many, many I mean they call this uh, they call the process of producing photograph many words but uh, not yet photography no. for example the geriotype no. how do they call it they, yeah, they, they, we have the heliograph and many other terms related to this no, until John F. Herschel no, coined the word photography then he introduced the term negative and positive in the following year and pointed out that image can be made permanent by dissolving away unexposed silver compound with a solution. So he focuses more on the development process. Because no? imagine during the early days, no? it's not that easy. Yung hindi ganun kadali magproduce ng photograph that when you point your camera at a certain object, you click, then you have the photograph. That's not how uh, mod, uh that's not how ancient photography works, no? If uh, you need to stand into the what they call the camera during those days, no? You need to stand there for like eight hours or more than that, no? Just to capture uh, an image of you. And even doon nga sa camera obscura, it's not really a camera that we know right now, no? Parang kumbaga... Uh, he is just tracing the image that reflects through the light, that reflects through the mirror, and goes directly to the object. So, it's not what you... Pag sinabi natin photograph before, it's not what you think na you point, you click, you shoot, then the image will be produced. It's not as easy as those before. No? Kasi we don't have the, the concept of the film yet. No? Ang meron pa lang tayo dito is the, the machine... No? I mean the, the instrument used to record these things no? then we have uh, the, the how we use light in order to produce these uh, different images no? so yun pa lang no? kasi if you're going to look at it talagang hindi siya binuo as one object itself no? so you, you will notice that somebody contributed in terms of lighting no? somebody contributed in terms of the object in, somebody contributed in terms of uh, the film, the use, the sensitized materials ng sinatanawag natin. Somebody also uh, contributed in terms on the development process of the image. So, this is a collective effort of many other uh, personalities no, who had contributed in their own way just to form the so-called camera that we have right now. So, yeah, no? we have a lot of development talaga, no? Just like Herschel, focus more on the chemicals used to uh, produce a permanent uh, image, no? Produce a permanent image of an object, no? So we have also William Abney. He discovered the use of hydroquinone as a developing agent in 1880. So again, developing agent which will focus on the development process, no? 
Edwin Land, he introduced the 1947 Polaroid process, one-step photography with the self-processing black and white film that yields a positive print by the diffusion of diffusion transfer reversal method and the like. Well, uh, we haven't mentioned about many other uh, personalities here, but basically, marami pa sila. No? And I will left that out for your further research kung sino-sino pa yung mga uh, nag-contribute pa sa development of uh, photography and the development of the, uh, the camera. No? But one thing that you must remember is that camera or photography did not develop as one. No? Some part of the camera, no, we made mention of this already, some part of the camera were developed separately then kumbaga pinagsama-sama na lang siya at later date para buuhin yung tinatawag nating camera no, to uh, make the field photography as as a scientific film no so that's how that's what we can say about the developmental process or the historical event of the development of photography okay uh, we always talk about photography but what is really photography no? Ano ba yung photography? We define photography as a technology geared towards the reproduction of image by using action of light, as we have mentioned kanina. On a sensitive surface, we're talking about the film, no? with the help of an image forming device, which is the camera, and the chemical process involved therein, which talks about the chemicals that we're talking about, the development. No, in, so developing you know, different chemicals there no? so basically the definition of photography discusses four important uh, subjects that we we should talk about no? first is that light light is very important to photography as we made mention then we should talk about film no? the development of uh, film because it is sensitized sensitive surface where the exposure no, when it is being exposed on light no, it turns into something no, especially if uh, paired na siya with the with the object na we use to record images which is the camera that we have right now no? so they, they work together in order to produce the so-called image now when you produce the image no, I mean, when you capture the image, you need to produce and make this image visible. No? In this parang DSLR that when you point, you shoot, the image will already be there. Na nakikita mo na yung image, that's not how it works during the early days. You need to process, no? you need to process the negative, kaya nga tinawag siya negative because it's not yet visible. You need to process that in order to make the, visib uh, and make the image uh, visible. No, para makita mo yung image na na-capture mo. No. So, uh, in doing that, you need to have or you need to uh, be familiar with different chemicals that are actually being used for the uh, chemical process. No. So, yun yung mga kailangan nating pag-usapan in the field of photography. No. Well, in simplest definition, when we talk about photography, we're basically talking about if that is defined in an artistic manner, no, it is simply means the art of taking picture. If we are defining photography in a scientific manner, then we are we should define it as the study concerning the production of image by the combined action of sensitized surface, mechanical device, chemicals, uh, chemical process. No, so that's it. Okay. Next is we need to talk about police photography. Yeah. So we define police photography as the study of general techniques, the study of the general techniques of photographing the crime scene, physical evidences, and other circumstances that can be used for law enforcement purposes. No? So police photography is when the concept of photography is used for police work. No? Well, uh, saan ba pumapasok or saan ba importante ang photograph no? sa police work? Well, investigation. No? Investigation that talks about 
uh, recording of evidences, no, documenting the evidences, and so on. Photographing the crime scene, yan, pasok lahat yan sa investigation. That's why, uh, in order for us to uh, do it well, we need to have a specific field that will make us knowledgeable with regards to the different concept of photography that we can apply to police work. No? In contrast to that, we need to talk about forensic photography. Kasi yan yung next topic natin. We define forensic photography as the field covering the legal application of photography in criminal jurisprudence and criminal investigation. You know, minsan or madalas, uh, they, they do not distinguish what forensic photography and police photography is. Pero magkaiba talaga sila. No. Magkaiba sila in the sense that when we talk about police photography, they're basically more on techniques on how like like for example uh, what what angle should be used in this specific situation parang ganun mga techniques di ba paano ko ba mas ma, mas makikita yung detalye ng ebidensya na to no uh, using photographs so you need to learn about the angles no you need to learn about the different techniques on how uh, you could apply light no in order to make the invisible visible no? such as the use of infrared the use of uv light uh, the use of oblique light, oblique lighting, mga ganun. More on techniques in order for you to record efficiently the different evidences that needed to be recorded. So that's that's police photography. No? Yun yung police photography. Pag sinabi natin forensic photography, we are more on the principle. No? Ano yung mga yun? Principle. Like, like for example, no? why should we accept photograph as an evidence no bakit natin kailangan tanggapin ng photograph as an evidence no uh, ano yung kaya ba ano ba yung uh, significance of photograph into criminal investigations that it is actually uh, okay for the court to admit it as an evidence so what what can we learn about these things no Basically, pag sinabi natin forensic photography, we are talking about the principles behind photography. Diba? Principles behind photography. Justification why we should accept photograph taken by police officer as an evidence in court. Diba? Uh, now, eto, this is forensic. Kasi we are talking about the, the value of photography to the criminal uh, to the uh, criminal jurisprudence to the criminal procedures no and as an evidence no so if we're talking about justification like well photograph can accurately uh, record no a certain crime scene no as uh, you know as accurate as possible so something like that so if you want to justify the use of photography into uh, recording evidences, then you are talking about forensic photography. More on principles, no? Principles. Bakit kailangan natin tanggapin ang photograph as an evidence? We're talking about forensic photography there. Kasi we're trying to justify that this is a reliable means of preserving, capturing, and recording evidence into the crime scene. And this is reliable because it it can be uh, it, it can be uh, we could we could uh, identify, we could easily identify when a photograph is being, you know, uh, uh, if is, is being faked or not. No? So, that's the issue. Kasi if you're going to look at our jurisprudence, kunti pa lang yung uh, jurisprudence natin na tinanggap nila yung digital copy of of uh, of digital copy no yung digitally produced image of something like crime scene no if you go to the court and you're going to present a cell phone an an, an image captured by a cell phone then most likely there will be many issues that will arise diba ang daming question diyan no pwede baka naman edited yan no so this is where the forensic photography comes in where it tries to discuss now, how reliable no, photographs taken from phone, taken from uh, digital camera, no, and 
uh, produced through the manual processes like for example yung yung laboratory produce na meron pa yung uh, uh, gumagamit ka pa ng chemical in order to produce uh, from from negative diba yung film na dati yung mga camera gumagamit ng film pa dati then you apply chemicals and so on how reliable is that compared to those uh, photographs that are being produced through uh, Canon printer or the modern printer that we have today. Now, so basically, these matters are now being discussed under forensic photography. Now, mas malawak yung concept niya kasi we're talking about uh, why we should uh, why should photography be admissible as evidence? Why should it be considered as an evidence and many more? But that's forensic photography. I hope that's clear, no? Kasi may, minsan magulo to eh. Minsan napag-iiba nila. Sabi nila minsan, parehas lang yan. Forensic photography, police photography, they're basically the same. But as again, now, when we are talking about the principles as to the reliability and admissibility of photograph into our court proceedings and so on, that's forensic photography. If we're discussing about the principle of photography and many other principles related to photography, that's forensic photography. Now, if we are talking about techniques, now getting the right angle, using the right light, now using the use uh, the right filter in order to produce uh, an accurate image of the crime scene or the evidence, then that's police photography. Okay, police photography, po yan. Okay. Next is uh, the significance of photography in police work. So, how significant is this? Photograph of the crime scene is a factual record. It's a factual record of an incident because it captures the place, time, and event in a single photograph <laughs> or in a series of shots. So, let's say for example, you're in the crime scene, the banandun ka sa crime scene. If you took photograph, you actually, parang, you stop the time at that specific moment. No? So, whatever was captured there, like for example, the, the nature of the place, the arrangement of the items, the objects there that could have an evidentiary value was already captured in that single photograph. Time, event, and many other things. So, very essential. No? If you have that, uh, if you have that uh, gadget that can do that, then definitely why not take advantage of it? So, yeah, we're talking about forensic photography now. We're talking about the significance of photography to the field of police work. No? So this is forensic photography right now that we're talking about. No? Later on, kapag pinag-usapan natin, lighting, angle, and so on, that's police photography. But right now, we're talking about forensic photography because we're discussing about the significance of photography to police work. No? How important, how big is this achievement for the police work? So, yeah. No? Kasi, tagapin na natin. Now, when we're talking about criminal procedure, uh, yes, uh, trials in our country sobrang tagal so your memories if you don't have any instrument that could record no uh, the specific nature the specific arrangement of the objects into the crime scene when it was committed then let's say for example after a month or two or even a year no doon pa lang nagkaroon ng trial then uh you were requested either by the opposing uh, opposing party or the, or the judge to describe no, the crime scene when it was committed. Well, if that's like one month ago or two months ago or even a year ago, no, parang uh, who, who, who can be able to who can be able to accurately describe what they saw months ago, two months ago or years ago, parang. Uh, we don't have that capacity no so we have this instrument that could use no that could record no in a just instant in in just one click the the, the place the crime scene that we're talking about no uh, the situation in the, the specific time no when the crime was committed and still no even years will pass no you can still describe no how the crime scene looks like with the use or by referring to the image that you captured during that time. So that's very essential, di ba? Napakagandang, ano yan, napakagandang achievement yan. Kasi before they're using sketch, but 
mind you, diba, hindi naman kayang i-record lahat ng sketch. Minsan, minsan pa nga may nangyari na kung saan is, uh, when they are searching on the crime scene, uh, may mga importanteng detalyeng hindi sila nakita. But later what? No? Uh, if they want to revisit like, parang isipin ulit nila, tignan ulit nila yung itsura ng crime scene, baka may namiss sila. They go, they they browse through the crime scene photographs that were taken during the time. They they will notice, oh, bakit mayroong ganito, may ganito pala, no? Which can be significant to the case being investigated. So how how important it is, how big, Im how how great that impact uh, brings to the uh, police work if if uh, we don't have this type of uh, gadget, no? So very significant, I would say, no? For, uh, Photography is very significant in police work as it gives them long-lasting memory on the situation of the crime scene, no? uh, situation of the place at the time the crime has, commit, has been committed. No? So that's very significant. Next topic, let's talk about um, the different... The different field, no? the different field of uh, photography. No? So we have here at least one, two, three, four, and five field of photography. But anyway, uh, hindi lang naman to. Ano, marami pa naman yan. Na pwede nating isale. But uh, for this discussion, I only going. I'm only going to discuss the following. No? So we have there the so-called photo micrography. Uh, photo macrography, infrared photography, U, uh, UV light or ultraviolet light photography, and X-ray photography. Both of them, no, uh, etong mga to have their own strength. No? That's why we could not just rely in one form of photography. No? We can rely in many form of you know photography no? if we need to. So we, we should not just rely on one. What is photomicrography? No? So photomicrography, it involves the processing of photographing uh, minute objects, yung very small objects. Like for example, you found some, uh, a drip of blood na nakakita ka na, well, not drip of blood, let's say, isang maliit na, ano lang, dent, isang maliit na dent uh, into the object. Yeah, let's say for example, fingerprint, okay. Let's talk about fingerprints. So, for example, you have fingerprint there. No? So, uh, that's an evidence. No? But it's really hard to observe fingerprint in its very minute detail. Diba? If you're looking, diba meron tayong uh, poroscopy, something like that in fingerprint. I know you encountered that. No? So, if you're trying to look or compare the different pores present into the regions of the, of the fingerprint, <laughs> I don't know if you can relate, no? But then they can do that. So how could you take an image of that very, very tiny object that are not visible with our naked eye? Of course, you use microscope. Diba? Like for example, the characteristic of the hair, the characteristic, ah, I think ano, this could apply to sa mga fibers, diba? fibers and yung mga ganito hairs. No? So let's say for example, you have a very small strand of fiber. No? So how could you take a photograph of that small, very small, of the characteristic of that very small fiber? No? Yung, alibawa, uh, may nalaglag lang ng isang, isang, ano, isang, ang tawag dito? Uh, sinulid? I don't know. <laughs> oh, isang sinulid ng damit mo. No? That, that is a valuable evidence no? if, we're, if we are going to use uh, a lot of scientific tool for that. So, may nalaglag or may nakita ka sa crime scene na isang hibla ng uh, sinulid ng damit, isang damit, no? Again, that's an evidence pa rin, no? How could you observe, no? Paano mo kaya ma-observe yung maliliit na detalye or yung detalye niya na for the point of comparison, no? Using that as an evidence. Kasi baka mamaya, no? Okay, may na nakuha kang hibla, you could observe that. Uh, take note of its characteristic and if you have samples of the like like for example may nakuha ka sa uh, property ng isang taong yan na uh, pinagsususpechahan nyo na damit no? then 
uh, pwede kang kumuha ng sample then you compare doon sa hibla ng damit na nakuha mo sa crime scene no that could be a big evidence pero ang problema dito how can you observe the minute detail of that small and tiny very tiny object no you could use photomicrography yan papasok si photomicrography wherein you can you can be able to observe the characteristic of that very small evidence through the use of microscope no? then you attach your camera to record what you see in the microscope so that's photomicrography wherein yung sobrang liit na, na evidence ay pwedeng enlarge with the use of either you use a specific type of lens no or you use yung mga tinatawag nating uh, microscope no na may capability na mag-record no ng uh, observation through the lens that is being used photomicrography that involves yeah magnification no? uh, usually with the use of an instrument that we call microscope no? then we also have the photomacrography no? photomacrography is somewhat different from photomicrography as to the uh, means on how the photos are being taken well Paras sila, now we talk about enlargement of an object, no? pero magkaiba sila on how they are uh, done. No? So for, for, for photomacrography, in order for you to get uh, an, enlarged, no? an enlarged image of an object, no? you don't need to use microscope. No? You don't need to use microscope. Rather, you need to use like let's say for example there's there's a, a drop of blood no? there's a drop of blood on the table now how could you take uh, an enlarged photo of it no? how could you take an enlarged photo of it so what you could do is you move closer to the object lapitan mo lapitan mo yung object diba tutok mo yung lens tutok mo yung camera without distorting the object uh, distorting the image yeah so that's photo macrography you can get an enlarged image of the object by, by, by moving closer to the object that you want to photograph. No? So, alibaba, yeah. Trip of blood. No? Ano pa? Uh, dent. No? Dent on, like for example, doon sa doorknob. No? Pinalo siya, pinukpok siya ng martilyo. So, nakita mo doon may tool mark. No? May tool mark siya. You want to get an enlarged image of that tool mark in, in that doorknob. So, what you can do you don't need to use a uh, microscope or so. You can just move closer to the object, to the evidence, and take a photograph of it. So you can adjust the lens setting and so on. So that's photomacrography. Okay, for infrared photography, well, uh, you know, meron kasi tayo mga hindi nakikita ng mga bagay-bagay. Because uh, our eyesight is somewhat limited only to doon sa visible light. No? Meron yung mga invisible light no? beyond the visible spectrum such as infrared and uh, UV. No? So, we could use also, we could apply these different types of light into photography. No? So, infrared photography, that's a way of photographing or recording unseen objects using infrared light. No? For if you use other type of light such as UV light or otherwise known as black light, no? then that's ultraviolet photography. No? Depende kung anong type of uh, light ang ginagamit mo in taking or yes, in taking pictures. No? Usually infrared uh, photography is very useful especially when you're taking photographs in a very very uh, dark no? uh, crime scene. No? Sobrang dilim. Uh, you wanted to capture an image of one person. Like for example, you are patrolling. No? Uh, ngayon, meron kang nakita na parang may gumagalaw sa isang masukal na parte ng uh, kalsada. No? Uh, wherein, uh, you don't want to disturb them on what they're doing kasi you want to, uh, to arrest them. Uh, you want to arrest them incognito. Uh, incognito. In flagrante delito delikto. No? So, gusto mo silang mahuli. Gusto mo makita kung anong ginagawa nila. No? You could use infrared photography to take a photo of that. So, kahit madilim, no? ma ma makakapture mo pa rin yung image, no? yung ginagawa nila doon without uh, 
you know alerting them because it does not have you know yung parang flash na yun. it's it's applied also doon sa mga ano yung mga CCTV camera where it's very good kasi it does not emit light may light siya pero it's black light so it's not visible hindi nakikita ng tao kala nila walang walang camera kasi madilim yun pala is meron so that's good for uh, that type of photography no? for UV naman very useful for like uh, searching no uh, like pwede yan sa mga blood stain Anyway, infrared, you could use that also for blood stain, pero hindi siya ganun ka-visible. If you're searching for blood stain, mga ganun, or semen, uh, discharge, seminal dis discharge sa isang room, mga ganun, you use UV light. For, for uh, some uh, money detector, na, sa mga money detector, they're also with the so-called UV uh, light. Na, so, uh, if you want to take photo of it no, using UV light, then that's ultraviolet photography. No? They can be used. No? Pwede mo silang, ano, if you don't have infrared uh, light no? uh, for taking photograph of non-visible uh, items, no? then you could use UV light. No? But I think mas maganda kasi if, let's, let's say for example, if you're searching, di ba naghanap ka ng stain, ng blood stain, some, something like that. You could expose the area using UV light. Then you take a photo of it using infrared light. If they work together, mas maganda yung magiging appearance. Kasi UV light make it visible. Infrared infrared light make you able to capture no, the image even in a dark area. Kasi hindi ka naman pwedeng mag-apply ng UV light then you turn on the white light. Parang it contradicts eh. Na diminish yung capability ng UV light. But then... If you're going to use both uh, uh, dark light, no? then uh, you could produce a better uh, uh, image of the item that you are taking photograph with. No? For X-ray photography, naman, X -ray photography naman, well, it's involved the use of X-ray. No? Uh, this is the process of photographing or recording internal structure of the human body. So you know naman what's an X-ray, you know. So it use also uh, another type of uh, another type of light no? with the lower uh, with the lower mag how do you call it? magnification I don't know no, parang in in the different spectrum no? of course that it penetrates in a solid object no? to make the internal parts visible so. Uh, X-ray is not only used for searching the inside of our human body, specifically the bones, but uh, diba doon sa airport, no? for security measures, X-ray is being used also para ma may scan nila kung ano yung nasa loob without, without uh, opening the items or opening the bag. So it's very important also. No? So pag mga ganun, mga ganun instances ang... Uh, uh, circumstances na hinaharap mo, you could rely on those different types of photography. Okay? So, that's the uh, first lecture that we will be uh, conducting no, for this subject matter. The rest of the lecture will follow. No? Uh, again, no, I uh, invite you to review or read in advance on the topics on forensic photography kasi uh, this is very, very wide. The, the concept or the Coverage of forensic photography is very wide, but I'm trying to simplify everything on it. No? That I would just only limit no, what we should talk about under this subject matter. So, very summarization. Okay? If you have questions with regards to the things that we're discussing, feel free to comment on the uh, comment section or feel free to approach me. No? And, uh, yeah, so that's it for this uh, module. No? Uh, see you on the next part of our discussion. Bye-bye.